Since it was first settled, the Logan region has flourished as a place of opportunity for small farmers. During the late 19th century, the settlers grew cotton, rice and sugarcane, and they raised dairy cows, sheep and goats. 100 years on specialised small farmers continue to provide both the stimulus for further development and yet also act as a buffer against overdevelopment due to housing and other industries. During the post-war era, many migrants moved into the Logan area looking for the op opportunity to have a fresh start. Italian and German families established small plots of land devoted to growing strawberries and citrus fruits. The impact of these migrant communities can be seen throughout the region as they built homes, businesses and churches. More recently, large numbers of migrants from Asian countries have moved into Logan and have engaged in the production of small, fresh produce. These market gardens can be found throughout the region, but particularly in Chambers Flat, Park Ridge and Greenbank. Many of these newer recent farmers do not send their produce to the wholesale markets, but prefer to sell their surplus independently and locally through roadside stalls, markets or through establishing informal partnerships with local retailers. In terms of more recent farms, it's a very hard business to start up a large produce farming venture. The Logan area nowadays is more suited to small produce farmers who grow on smaller two to four hectare blocks. Generally, looking at the area where these blocks are being sold, if a block has this much land, it's probably quite close to farming or produce growers, or the land might be intended for farming itself. It's quite common to find very expansive growing communities centered around a much older and larger farm or produce business as well. An example is the North McLean Mushroom Exchange, and just over the road from that, the Livestock Farm. These have many other smaller farms based around them. In particular, there are citrus, strawberry and some small grape vineyard type production, productions going on. Again, if you look at the Parkland's wholesale flower business, there are citrus and stone fruit growers, there's a pine tree and bonsai grower, and also some livestock businesses going down in Hobner Road. On the other side of the flower farm, on Chambers Flat Road, there are strawberry, citrus and vegetable growers, who are all in small, small produce and there's also the Coplex Turf Farm on Coplex Road near Chambers Flat. These businesses form the core of the community. They show stability and a communal based idea of what the region is about and where it is going in terms of development and the population. These are the buffers that keep Logan a garden community. With a greater population, more development and smaller plots of land, this garden community of Logan would be lost. These farms have been and continue to be good stimuli for business, local trade and work. Some, such as the Mushroom Exchange and Azalea Grove Nursery, have huge wholesale productions and have been operating since the early 1950s. These, and many other similar businesses, are significant employers of the community. These farms are still very successful for a community that has grown and has been urbanised so much. Their contribution to local development over the last half century is clearly significant and is mirrored in other smaller businesses like Ollie's Orange, fruit and veggie stores and nurseries like Sun State Gardens, the Plant Seed and Park Ridge Landscaping. These businesses are clearly derived from the local farmers. The farmers themselves have also expanded the nature of their business. For instance, some produce growers have often gone from selling at markets to owning a local store and selling just locally as the community gets larger. This again contributes to the development of work, growth of shopping centres, and further development of the community and population. Ollie's Orange and the Sorbello family provide an exemplary case study. Lenny Sorbello, after he moved to Brisbane from Stanthorpe, where he owned an apple orchard previously owned by his dad, he worked in the Rockley markets for a year, and then he and his family bought the fruit market in Park Ridge, which was called Ollie's Orange Fruit Market, and then later took over from John Wayne's Fruit Market in North McLean and called it Ollie's Orange as well. They decided to sell Park Ridge based Ollie's and focus on the North McLean one. And since then, they have improved on the business immensely to what is now the newest improvement of Ollie's. By this stage, another generation had joined the family operation and recognized the growth trends in the area. They still retain the original Park Ridge fruit growing property, but of course, have expanded their sales far beyond what this alone can produce. They still very much support Australian and local growers and also their fresh fruit policy as well. As these enterprises have prospered, they have given back to the community by way of work and service, donations of funds, time and their produce, and also with sponsorships and sometimes land. 
All of these are reasons why these farmers and growers have survived all these years. The relationship between small farming and the community is a symbiotic one. Financial and community success, good use of land and jobs, promoting growth and development to the community, and simply just for growing with the community, have all been factors and milestones. The relationship is a mutually beneficial one. As a whole, the farming and growing community does seem to be able to take care of itself and looks like it will be able to sustain itself during further development for many years to come. Local growers and settlers agree that this market will be a good one for some time to come. They express confidence in the foreseeable future, and the Logan City bylaws still accommodate for this rural land use. The small specialised farmers of Logan are an integral part of the landscape of the region. Their contribution in past decades was in stimulating regional development, contributing conspicuously to the look and feel of the area, at the same time, they have created an invaluable buffer against overdevelopment, which may ultimately prove to be their greatest contribution to our community.